Hello everyone and thanks for joining today's uh, session. I'm Pascal and next to me Francois Lothair to present this webinar. Uh, Francois is our uh, business advisor at the Brussels office. He will speak today about purchase and procurement. Hello Francois. Hello Pascal. And before we start this uh, session, let me share with you some guidelines in order to have a smooth webinar. Presentations should take about 30 minutes, followed by a Q&A session from 15 minutes. This webinar, of course, is recorded and you can always uh, watch it again just by going on the same link that you see above in your browser. If you wish to book a private uh, meeting with Francois, you can always click on the link just below in the description of this uh, webinar. Um, during this session, you can always enter your questions and we will uh, be glad to answer them during the webinar and also after in the Q&A session. Well, I think I said enough and Francois is ready to rock. So um, take your seat and enjoy. Thank you, Pascal. Um, so as Pascal said, uh, my name is Francois Leterre. Uh, I'm business advisor EMEA um, uh, in Belgium. Um, you can have my contact details uh, just in the slide here. Uh, so my email address is frl at odoo.com. Uh, there will be a, a Q&A session, but if you have any other question, do not hesitate to uh, send an email to me. You can also schedule a meeting uh, through the, uh, the following link uh, here. Um, that is also in the description of the video. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to uh, present a bit uh, Odoo, uh, and then after that, we will start uh, the webinar. So I will uh, introduce this presentation of Odoo with a little quote uh, from Fabian Pinkars, uh, Odoo founder and CEO. Um, so our mission is to transform the way uh, companies run their business. We make IT simple and fully integrated. We help organizations grow. So yeah, through the, the different modules we propose, um, we, uh, our goal is really to help uh, to adapt to uh, every company and to help them to grow. Some key figures about Odoo. Um, Odoo uh, was created in 2005 and grew up quite well as we are now uh, about 350 employees worldwide um, with two offices in Belgium. Um, in Brussels, we have the sales and marketing department. Uh, and in Grand Rosière, in a bit more in the south of Belgium, uh, we have our services and R&D department. We also have, uh, we also have uh, an office in Luxembourg, two offices in the United States, New York and San Francisco, one in Hong Kong and one in India. Uh, we have a network of uh, 850 partners uh, worldwide uh, in about 120 countries. There are, there are also about 3 million users using Odoo every day. In terms of market positioning, our goal is really to be as easy as possible. Um, we tend to, um, to uh, in terms of easiness to use, we turn to be like Shopify, um, MailChimp, Slack, or Trello, which are quite also quite easy to use, but um, who have a business scope quite limited. Uh, we want to cover a, a way larger business scope and confront ourselves in terms of business scope to uh, SAP, Oracle, or uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Just some references, some um, uh, well-known uh, companies using Odoo, such as Engie, uh, Bertinchon, a Belgian brewer uh, in Belgium, uh, using Odoo for uh, sales and inventory management, or uh, HP using uh, Odoo um, for uh, purchasing uh, inventory and sales management too. Um, so it's, start to, uh, um, it's time to start the webinar. Um, first of all, I will make a, a quick overview of what we are going to see today. Um, we will, I will first uh, show you a bit um, the product overview and how we configure it uh, so that we can manage our, purchase, uh, our purchases um, at its optimum. Uh, then I'm going to show you the different routes you can use uh, within Odoo, so the make-to-order, the reordering rules, or uh, the dropshipping. Um, then I'm going to show you some reports you can have uh, within Odoo, and I will end up with um, making invoices from your vendors. And then uh, we will uh, finish this uh, presentation with a Q&A session. It's time now to start uh, the webinar. 
So I created uh, here a small database um, with the modules that uh, are going to interest us. Um, and I'm, as I said in the overview, uh, I'm gonna show you first um, the, uh, some products uh, that I created. Um, so when you enter into the product view, you will have a Kanban view, Kanban view of all the products, okay? Uh, you have this Kanban view, you can also have a list view uh, showing a bit more information such as um, the quantity you have on hand, uh, the, the forecasted quantity. Uh, the difference between both uh, quantity on hand is the quantity that you have uh, really in stock, okay? As the forecasted quantity takes into account um, the sales orders you have you had from your clients, but also the purchase orders um, you made for your uh, vendors. Also units of measures, internal category, um, we will see everything uh, just a bit later. Um, I will go back uh, in my Kanban view. Um, some useful fi filters that you can have here. Uh, for example, uh, you can um, have a view on the services or on the products then you use the filters to have only uh, one category. Um, you can check uh, the uh, available products, the, so the, the, the products that you have uh, in your stock. Um, the, the, the exhausted stock, so the products you don't have anymore in stock, you can see here that you have zero quantity on hand for all these, those products. Um, also negative stock, here we don't have any negative stock, so it's quite, uh, good. Um, you can also uh, make other filters uh, such as um, uh, custom filters. I want to see, uh, for example, vendors that contains, um, I don't know, Panasonic, for example. Okay, then I will apply and I will only see the products uh, that have uh, Panasonic as a vendor. Um, you can also make groups. Uh, I want, for example, to group by uh, internal, internal category. Okay, and I will then uh, therefore group my products by internal uh, category. I apply, and so I can see that my products are, are grouped there. Okay, from those features and groups, uh, you can make favorites if you want to. Um, I will enter now a, a form view uh, into a product. Uh, for example, I will check um, the Apple Watch. Okay, um, you have of course a product name, uh, you can set if uh, you can sold, uh, uh, sell the product uh, and if you can purchase it, uh, it. Uh, here uh, both can, uh, can be done. Um, you have the product type also, okay? The product type, you have three possibilities. Uh, either it will be um, a service or a consumable or a stockable product. So if you want to manage the stock of your product, you will select a stockable product. If you don't want to, uh, you will select, select consumable. And as you can see, if you select cons consumable, uh, some smart buttons will disappear, uh, such as uh, the quantity on hand, the quantity forecasted, because you, you don't manage the stock. Okay. Here, we will manage the stock for this product. Um, you can also um, set the, the internal category. Okay. The internal category will allow you to, um, to set the costing, costing method okay, to value uh, your stock, uh, such as standard price. Uh, you can use the standard price first in, first out, or average cost. Um, you can also um, select the removal strategy that you want to use, uh, such as FIFO or LIFO. Um, you will select also an internal reference, sales price, sales price and cost. Um, and you will be able also to select different unit of measures. Here, we will sell uh, the watch uh, as a unit, but you can also um, select different units of measure um, that you will use for your stock or for your purchases. I, I will take an example here, for example, um, for the GoPro. Uh, for the GoPro, I will manage my stock and my, uh, my sales uh, by units, but I will buy them uh, by dozens. We will see later when we will make a purchase that um, automatically the dozen units will be taken into account. You of course have a lot of different uh, unit of measures. For example, if you sell services, you will be able uh, to set um, hours in your uh, unit of measures. Um, let's go now uh, through um, variants. 
I created a product, uh, the Bose port portable speaker here, um, and I created uh, four different variants. If I go in my variant button here, I can see uh, all the variants that apply uh, based on the attribute color, and we have different values for this attribute. If I want to see the, uh, the pictures here, I can see the different colors uh, and the different variants for uh, those um, speakers. Um, you can also select different prices if you want uh, for those variants. So if I go back here, I can set different prices for the different variants I have. Um, so you can see here the different variants. In my purchase, uh, in the purchase part here, you will assess a vendor to, um, uh, to a product. Okay? You can assess one or uh, several um, suppliers. Um, let's take, for example, the GoPro uh, here. I have uh, the, the vendor GoPro Inc., uh, which is my vendor. I can set um, dif uh, a different name uh, for this vendor. Here it's called Euro 6 Black instead of GoPro Euro 6 Black. Um, and when I'm going to um, send my request for quotation for this vendor, um, it's the uh, product name and the product code that will appear uh, on this document. I can also assess a delivery lead time. So, for example, uh, I, um, here the delivery lead time for this specific vendor it is three days uh, so that I can receive the product. And then you can assess price list to your vendors. For example, the, the base price for this vendor is 459 US dollars. But now if I purchase at least five dozens uh, of this specific product, um, the sales price will be lower and will be $399. Uh, we will also see it later how um, the the different uh, purchase prices uh, can be uh, here, uh, can vary um, using the different quantities. Um, I will now uh, go into uh, one of the main points of this presentation, uh, which is the routes. Uh, you can, of course, um, select different routes um, that your uh, product will follow uh, when purchasing it. The, the easiest one is uh, selecting the buy uh, product. Um, then it means that you will uh, manually um, create a request for quotation uh, for this product. Okay. Uh, let's take the, the example of um, the, the watch, okay, for the Apple Watch. I will select my vendor. Um, I can have a, a vendor re reference, for example, it will be AP um, here, uh, AP01, and I will select my product, which is Apple Watch. This is one way to, uh, to create my uh, request for quotation. I will save it. Uh, I can, of course, update the quantity. I want a price for three uh, Apple Watches. I will save it and I will be able to send my uh, request for quotation by email. Directly, you can uh, set up uh, an email template that will fill in the text of my email, and I will have my uh, request for quotation that is attached to my email. Okay. Um, another way to do, if you already know the price uh, of this specific product, and you don't want to, uh, to send a request for quotation, but directly uh, send a sales order, you can directly confirm the, the order and send your purchase order to your supplier. Then it, it will be, of course, the PO that will be sent with the price you want to buy it. I will send uh, then my purchase order. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but the confirmation of my uh, RFQ triggered uh, two smart buttons here. One shipment but button, um, here it will be my uh, receipt that will appear, and one vendor bill. We will see it later. So once I confirm the order, uh, what I will do is waiting um, for my uh, supplier to deliver it to uh, my warehouse. So if I go back uh, now in the inventory module, I will be able to see the receipts, the delivery orders I have to do, and also the dropship uh, that I will uh, see with you also later. 
So I have here one product, uh, one um, uh, receipt uh, in in my uh, receipt part here, and it is um, the the purchase order I just made for the three Apple watches I want to uh, have in my stock. Once I receive uh, my three Apple watches, I can validate uh, my receipt. If I didn't receive my three uh, Apple watches, let's say I just received two, I can set it on my uh, on my receipt. Okay, here I say uh, only two have been done. I will save it, and if I validate, the system will propose uh, to create a back order of this receipt. If I created it, you will be able to say that another uh, receipt has been created, which is a back order of my order receipt number three for uh, the last Apple Watch that I need to receive. I will validate this receipt and apply it. Now, if I go on my Apple Watch product, I will be able to see that I have now three uh, Apple Watches on hand in my stock. So this is the first way to create um, a purchase or a re re request for quotation. It's manually, uh, it's the easy easiest one. Another way to create a request for quotation um, will be uh, by a make to order. Um, let's take a product that has been configured uh, by a make to order. Uh, if I take the GoPro, uh, not this one, uh, I will take my iPhone X and I will select the make to order uh, here uh, root. What does it mean? It means that whenever I will receive a sale order from my client, it will automatically create a draft request for quotation uh, for the, um, the vendor that is linked to this product uh, for the same quantity. Let's take the example. I will go in my sales, create for my uh, um, customer Agrolet a quotation for the Apple iPhone X, you wanted, for example, to purchase a uh, five uh, iPhone. I will save it. I can also send it by email, but I won't go um, long for the, the sales part. I will directly confirm the sale. Directly a delivery button appear um, here. I have to deliver the five uh, Apple iPhone X, but it's waiting. It's waiting for another operation to do within Odoo, which is the purchase that has been created for the vendor Apple uh, for the five um, iPhone X. Okay, so this document has been automatically created uh, once I received the, uh, the sales order from my customer. Now I can either again send my RFQ uh, to my supplier or directly confirm it and then send my purchase order. You will always, uh, in the purchase order form, um, have a, a chatter uh, that will um, uh, give a, a timeline of what happened um, on this specific purchase order from this creation, from its creation, for a, sorry, uh, just uh, a few seconds ago, uh, to um, the, the mail I just sent to my supplier. I can also schedule different activities. Uh, for example, uh, just call uh, reminder okay, and schedule my activities on this specific uh, per, uh, purchase order. I can also send directly other emails to my supplier. Hey, uh, don't forget to send it as soon as possible and I will send uh, this email to my supplier. Again, um, the confirmation of this pur purchase um, triggered two smart buttons, one shipment and one vendor bill. So again, if I go in my inventory, I will have one receipt and once I receive it, I will validate and it will enter into my warehouse, into my stock. Another way to um, Another route that uh, a product can follow um, is the following. 
I created, for example, for the GoPro, a reordering rule. I want to have um, at least in my stock 12 units of uh, my GoPro, and at maximum, I want to have 120. Okay? What the system will do is when I will go below this minimum quantity, uh, the system will automatically generate a draft RFQ um, to arrive to the maximum quantity I want to have in stock. Let's take the example of the GoPro. How many do, ya, do I have in stock? I don't have any GoPro in stock. So if I run my scheduler, that's something that can be automatically done um, every day, for example. Um, I will run my scheduler here, and the system here calculated all the uh, reordering rule and checked um, in the stock if some products are under the minimum quantity I want to have. And it directly created two um, draft RFQ, one for the bows, okay, which also has um, uh, a reordering rule, if we can check here, 25 and max 60, and one for the GoPro for the 10 dozens uh, I want to have in stock. Um, it also um, here uh, took into a account uh, the price list. We have a unit price of 399. Why? Because if I go back on my purchase, I can see that I, I here uh, ask a price for uh, more than five units. So it takes into account uh, the, the price list um, that corresponds to the quantity. So I will go back to my purchase and then I will validate it again, confirm my order, send it to my supplier. And receive it into my stock. I received the 10 dozens. So if I check now in my inventory, I should have 120 quantities on hand. So it's correct. The last route that um, a product can have um, is the drop shipping. I will take uh, here my product for the uh, Panasonic TV, for example. If I go in my inventory um, here, I can see that I selected the drop shipping. So what uh, is it go going to do? Um, again, if I create a quotation uh, for Agrole, okay, for my customer, for the uh, Panasonic TV. So, Panasonic TV uh, for one unit, for example. I save it. Again, I send my quotation to my customer. He confirms the sale. It will automatically uh, create in my inventory, um, in my purchase, for example, uh, sorry, um, an RFQ also for my supplier. If I confirm the order, it will automatically create in my inventory um, a receipt in dropship. Okay. So the supplier will directly um, send the Panasonic TV um, to the customer without going into uh, our stock. I will validate, validate it and apply once uh, the product is delivered. Now let's have a look uh, to the reporting and the analysis we can have in the purchasing. To have an overview of the reporting, I can go in the reporting and check, for example, here directly, I have a, a graph view of what I purchased to my different suppliers. For example, uh, here to Apple, Bose, GoPro, and Panasonic, I have um, the measure, uh, the average price of uh, the products I bought to it. I can have uh, an overview of, uh, for example, the total price. Okay. I have also an access to my pivot view. And I can see here that to the, those different suppliers, um, I bought a total of uh, almost uh, 50,000 uh, euro, um, which is uh, with the 373 products at an average, an average price of 600 I can select other fields if I want to. For example, I want to know um, which products I bought to which suppliers. 
I sell it, I sell it the product here, and I can see that uh, I ha I have all the products that appear here. I can ask to have less um, measures. I just want to see the, the total price, and I can see here the total total price I bought for uh, the Panasonic, uh, and and so on. Okay. Those measures can be exported uh, into an Excel file. I will just select OK table. I will put it on my desk, desktop, replace it, and then I can open it if I want. So it appears in my Excel file. Okay. I can, also, of course, have other measures. Uh, let's take for instance, products. Um, I want to see the average price and the quantity. And I want to see uh, in a certain period, for example, uh, between, so the, I will take, for example, the, uh, let's take, uh, the date approved is between, for example, uh, 1st of November and F end of November. Okay. I don't have any recall he here, but uh, you can see uh, the logic behind. A last thing I want to uh, to show you uh, before the Q&A session is the uh, invoicing, uh, the vendor bills. You can directly uh, from the invoicing module uh, create vendor bills um, from your sales orders. I will explain it right now. For example, I will create a vendor bill uh, from my supplier, let's say Apple, and I will be able to select all the, uh, the purchase orders uh, linked to this uh, supplier. I have two here, uh, the number 12 and the no number 13. And automatically, um, the products uh, linked to these uh, different purchase orders will appear. I can save it and validate it. I can do it for all my suppliers very fast. I will select, for example, Bose and select. Here, I just have one PO. I will save it and validate. Let's take a last one. Uh, let's take GoPro. I also have a purchase order from there. I save, I validate it, and I can uh, register a payment. Okay, here I paid uh, the total amount for this uh, supplier by bank. I validate my payment. You can see that it's been paid uh, for the total amount uh, at this date. So this ends um, this web live webinar. Um, so do not hesitate if you have any question uh, to ask it uh, during this Q and A session. Well, thank you, Francois. You're welcome for this uh, session. So yes, please, guys, um, ask your questions. A few of them were already answered during uh, this uh, webinar. Um, as you could see, this webinar is a high-level uh, webinar about purchase. There is, of course, a lot more uh, to speak about purchase. Um, if you have really detailed questions, um, two ways, uh, whether you uh, make an appointment with Francois by clicking on the link below this webinar, or I suggest you also to participate to our uh, Friday live support sessions um, uh, where you can ask uh, all kind of questions and certainly detailed questions to our functional um, consultants. So I will see here if I have other questions uh, coming up. Um, about drop shipping, I have question from Edouard. Um, I have 10 products in my stock. I choose a drop shipping route. What will happen with my 10 product in stock? Will they stay forever in my stock? If you select the drop shipping, yeah, the, the 10 products you have in your stock uh, won't move. Okay. So for example, uh, I will take again uh, my Panasonic, Panasonic TV. If you uh, here, um, select in your inventory the dropshipping um, route. It will be it will go directly from your vendor to your client. Um, it won't check in your inventory if you have uh, still uh, products in your stock or not. Uh, 
Okay, um, to see if we have another question. Uh, can I get warning to email when some item is out of stock? Um, when some items are out of stock, you won't have a warning or a, a notification. What the system will do, and to avoid to have no uh, item of, on stock, um, we suggest you to create reordering, reordering rules. For example, uh, I made it for the GoPro. Okay, I want to have minimum 12 in stock. So if I go below this minimum quantity, the system will automatically create uh, a draft RFQ. So we'll, you will, of course, have to check uh, in your purchase list what you will have to purchase, but it allows you to uh, check here um, all the items that have to be bought in order to uh, not to run out of, out of stock. Okay, thank you, Francois. Let's see here if we have another question. I'm scrolling. Um, how to invoice only done pickings and not full orders? Okay. Um, this is something you can figure also in the products uh, view. Uh, for example, I will take um, the Apple Watch here. Uh, you can select in your invoicing, and that's something I didn't show, so it's a good question, the invoicing policy, okay? Um, so you can uh, say, okay, I want to be invoiced or I want to be in, uh, to invoice my clients based on ordered or uh, based on delivered quantities. Uh, for example, for my um, suppliers, um, if I set on received quantities, uh, and if I want to create purchase bill, it will um, only uh, create the bills for the products I received. Mm -hmm. The same for the uh, invoicing my clients. Uh, if I select uh, delivered quantities, it won't take into, into account um, uh, my uh, the, the quantity in my quotation, but it will take into account the quantity I really delivered uh, in my invoice. Okay, thank you, Francois. Okay. Um, another question from Edouard here. How do you automate everyday reordering minimum stock rules? Uh, that's something that is automatically done. Um, so if I go uh, in my inventory, uh, that's something that is automatically done every day. Uh, you don't have to configure it. Uh, of course, you don't have to run the scheduler uh, every day manually. Um, you can, uh, it's done automatically uh, every day. Um, you don't have to configure e uh, anything for that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I hope it answers the question here. Okay, thanks Francois. Um, let's see here if we have other questions. Please guys, um, still uh, send us your questions. I don't have other questions regarding purchase and procurement yet. Um, so I'm waiting for your questions. Go ahead, guys. We are with you uh, for the next five minutes. No questions so far? Let me remind you that... Uh, if some questions might come uh, later on this day, um, come tomorrow to our uh, functional support session, okay? Um, our functional guys will be happy to answer all those questions and make some more demo. Or if you are really interested and want to have a specific demo regarding your needs, click the link below and make an appointment with uh, Francois. If no questions are popping up, um, then I think it, uh, we will close this session. You can always okay. um, review uh, this webinar, okay, anytime you want. I would like to thank you. In the name of thank you very much. Myself, and uh, see you next week. As you know, we have a weekly webinar. Go check our webpage, uh, www.odoo.com slash events, and subscribe for the next event. Thank you very much, and have a Good day.